so thanks for everybody for coming. Um, I, you never know how many people are going to turn out, so I'm happy to see such a full house, uh, literally. Um, welcome to the gallery. Some familiar faces, some new faces. Um, to introduce, this is Jonathan Hobson Gallery. Um, we're at the tail end of an exhibition for Bradley Curl. It's his first solo exhibition with the gallery. Um, we've been friends for a number of years, but it's nice to finally have an exhibition together, and uh, it's such a beautiful show, and I'm really proud of it. Um, and so today we're having a conversation between Bradley Curl and Bill Arning. Uh, Bill Arning is the unofficial art mayor of Houston, <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm proud to be friends with both of them and uh, share this conversation with y'all. So sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here today with Bradley, uh, an amazing painter who I've followed since his student days. And um, I went with John to see this show in the studio, and I live around the corner. The physical dimensions of this space are something I'm really aware of. And I'm looking at paintings like this, and um, I guess when I was there, you and Jonathan were still in the middle of discussions yeah. about how this was going to work. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that you were, you could not deal with the architecture, but then you're, you're a painter painter. You're like a kind of classic painter in so many ways. We'll go into like your relationship to painting history in a bit. Um, have you ever conceived something like this architecturally? And what was the nature of the discussion with Jonathan about this? Yeah, just being being familiar, familiar with the space itself and having been to most of the shows here, um, there's a definite style. They like to hang things like very, very minimally, very austere, um, kind of just so. And I, when we decided to, to work together and have the show, the first my first thought was to have something really kind of um, brash and just sort of not not silly per se, but just something that like, maybe that doesn't make sense to have it in a, in a small space like this. Yeah. And um, yeah, from the very beginning, the outset, I was like, I knew I wanted to have paintings that just barely fit into the door, or were like designed to fit uh, to fit on specific walls. Um, and that, yeah, I think the first bit of information that I got I got from John was send me the dimensions for the for the um, the fireplace. Um, <laughs> but I knew I wanted to hang something in front of that um, and just kind of, uh, you know, get punched people when they walked into the, into the space um, and to have it not so, not so austere, but be thoughtful in a different way, I guess. Well, there's a certain theatricality, like this looks, there's something about your paintings that looks like classic 1930s painted stage sets mm -hmm. and to actually put them in a space where they're off the wall, I mean, it was all I could do to not sing a couple opera arias in front of this man when I walked in. Um, so there's this thing, it heightens the artificiality of the craftsman home and the, uh, right. and the artificiality and the constructedness of the paintings to have, to have them off the wall, have them in this sort of weird way where you see behind. And then also, I actually love hanging things in front of windows. Mm -hmm. uh, at my house, I've got this uh, uh, Jeff Mitchell, who's an artist from Seattle, uh, piece uh, that's hanging in, fr in front of a window like from the mullion and it just looks great yeah but like i know this is a brightly lit space so to have the greenhouse right. painting with the light behind it with actual foliage next to the real foliage you're playing all these layers of simulacra here yeah yeah another just like i i would use this painting in my studio to block light for a few projections that, like throughout you know this past year and would catch these moments where light was coming through um, and that's that's just like a bonus thing that, that happens. But yeah, I think you you know the way the house is set up. There's not many places to hang things, um, mm -hmm. and you kind of have to get creative one way or the other. Um, and me just being sort of greedy, a visual like if I go see a show, I want to see a bunch of things and yeah. you know, some big things and some small things, and so I want to like have as many many looks as possible. Um, but yeah, I think that this is. The way that this painting works, especially well with like all the intersecting lines and the grids and um, the you know the foliage outside, like you said, it's just like too too good to be true, really. Why well, don't it's so right under the curtain rod, so it looks like you should be able to just ship it back and forth, like <laughs> right? Like, like when they would tired of the actual foliage, all yeah. the uh, the fake foliage, and exactly the lighting for the plants or whatever. 
Yeah. Now, and also, if I remember correctly, you were not here for the installation because you were off to your to your uh, residency in Italy. Uh, so you designed all this in theory, and then, like, were they like sending like JPEGs to you in uh, in Italy, going, "Is this what you thought it was going to look like?" Well. I did. I didn't. I don't think I actually got images until like the opening day. And um, at a certain point, I was. I had a thought. I was like, kind of looked at the, my phone and saw the date. And I was like, oh yeah, the show's coming up. Um, <laughs> but it's such a credit to um, John and Deborah that I never that I have this like vast pool of images and studies and ideas to draw from for the future yeah. um, and to build upon. So if your sources for the first body of work was all the collage, uh -huh. the amazing collages, if you're actually going to be working from your own travel watercolors for the next body of work, or not necessarily. Like now, nowadays, it's, um, it's it seems too formulaic to have it like laid out like collage, study, painting. Um, it, it varies. Um, the paintings in this show, um, for instance, would be this one had this one had two watercolor studies. Um, the big painting in the back of my wife in the, in the garden is is from an etching that I like, sort of faux colored. But there was a photo for that. Yeah, that photo. That's the basis of the etching. Exactly. Right. I mean, I said this is from Bison Studio, not here. Right. This one's from a watercolor, so it's um, it varies. But I think that for, for that work specifically, the work in Tuscany, it's like I don't want to. I think that those those little yeah. things should just be the, their own thing, and then I can. Yeah. Um, build upon build upon some of those ideas and uh, you know some like fully realized paintings. Well, and I've thought of you as not a figurative painter, and suddenly the figure comes in, and one of which is you, and one of which is your wife. So right. you basically like only let the immediate family in. Uh, right. You're not exactly <laughs> letting anyone else through the door. Right. Uh, and presumably, you know your wife's face better than most people. You probably know your your own face less. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's. I feel like talking with people about it, um, like in the lead up to the show and during the show, it feels like um, I've been like working towards being um, confident, comfortable, and willing to willing to um, go there. The fig the figures specifically, like um, you know, self portraiture and um, my family, because it just always seemed like it was going to be too sentimental yeah. or something. Um, but having having done it now, having kind of crossed the th that threshold, it feels yeah. Well, we've all been waiting for you to actually do the baby paintings. Yes. Uh, since That's, yeah, <laughs> two babies. Yeah, two babies. I, yes. I started one watercolor. I just I haven't finished it because it did it was just too like. You had to call the therapist. <laughs> 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 too sentimental. Yeah. Um, no, try to make the baby painting. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, try to make the baby painting and not have to be sentimental. Is one of those. Because babies are really scary looking, you know, there's things exactly. about them that are like, when you look at them closely, you're like, that's actually kind of a little strange creature thing. You know? Right. Yeah, there's a, there's, there are at least like one Instagram account dedicated to like those, the weird like Renaissance babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just like really like blobby potato head kind of things. <laughs> scary. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. The, um, so but now, now that you've opened the door to figuration, are you suddenly like, yeah, it's. I mean, I, I did. Um, I worked on a few portraits of people and fellow residents, and um, some self portraits as well at, at the residency. And yeah. it felt like um, I did just a few, just kind of try, try, try a few things out, and um, kind of set those aside and move on to the cars or whatever it was. But it definitely feels like that's where I'm kind of being. Um, and it's exciting to have new, you know, subject matter as well, um, different things to think about, of course. But, um, but yeah, again, it just feels like I, I reached a point where I feel like skilled and, and comfortable and confident enough in what I'm doing to, to like move on to like adding figure, which complicates things. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Well, just the sheer amount of, like, even when you're doing people now, they are surrounded by so much information right. about the stuff that's in their environment. And I love that in each case you did a second painting just 
of the face. Right. That a way of like, okay, since I'm going to do this thing that is not associated with Bradley Curl, I'm going to go ahead and put people in it. I might as well reiterate it by doing a separate painting just so you see the face and you don't get lost in the plants in the bar and everything yeah, else around. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of like, there's another, you know, small group of, of paintings that are like the 16 by 20 size in the studio that come kind of the show. They're kind of that same, yeah. kind of that same idea, but um, yeah, especially with the one um, with my wife uh, in the back, it's just like it almost just sort of happens to be there happens to be a figure in there. It's yeah. just like, you know, but I like I like that about it. But, but then you did her face separately too. So exactly. Just, yeah. Just so you didn't get thrown out of night. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> is it about me or is it about the flowers? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. both. It's both. Yeah. No. I um uh I was at, at Louis Fortino's studio and and he's. One of those ridiculously hot figure to paint in mm -hmm. Europe, and now he just got picked up by Sikkim and Jenkins. And Lou had this one painting of his dad, which was like real, like a portrait of his dad in this real formal way. And I'm like, right. I was like, Lou, that just doesn't look like one of your paintings. He's like, yeah, but he kept getting mad. He kept getting pushed to the side in all the family paintings. Right. And I finally, he was getting his feelings hurt, so I had to do a portrait of him just to like not have him be mad at me. Right. No, and that's that's the, my experience in when I was. Like, the residency is like I had to stop in a way. It's like oh, I'm not going to do any more of those because people were like, "When's when are you going to do my portrait? When's my, when's my turn?" Um, it happened one ring, Bradley. Do what? It happened one ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never you're ready. Yeah. Never ready. Um, yeah, you get yourself in trouble. Like, okay. Yeah, really quick. Yeah, people yeah. start. You know, the list is getting shorter, and if you haven't made my painting yet, what's yeah. going on? Do you hate me? Yeah. Or, or, or or do you think I look funny? You yeah. know. The, um, you and I also like tend to like, we also have these great conversations and openings about really unhip painters that we like. Uh, right. I remember like this story about Fairfield Porter oh, yeah. and about our love of Fairfield Porter right. and how like young art people are like, oh, well, Fairfield Porter? Like, you know. Yeah, I don't know. He was someone that I, I think a professor had turned me on to in like undergrad um, and just like, spoke to me or like the way it was it was um, you know obviously clearly like very very like skilled painter but like working with very immediate subject matter like his family his surroundings and just kind of really um, I don't know dedicating himself to like being a great painter of just the stuff that's around him I, I identified with them and even more strongly now like kind of what I'm, I'm doing not the same style you know at yeah. all but um, yeah it's just but it's funny how some people um, Go that way. Like Al Alex Katz is something that's a little more popular, but still kind of in that yeah. same same realm. Um, even David Hockman too is massively popular, but some people kind of like you know don't don't like um, give him as much. Well, I mean, the thing I could do about my trajectory with Hockney was that I was obsessed by Hockney when I was an undergrad. Did my undergrad thesis on David Hockney's stage designs for opera. And then suddenly I became embarrassed about my obsession with Hockney. And I think I just saw enough people, like I would bring up liking Hockney and they would go, oh. Yeah. And I was like, and, and then suddenly after the, uh, after the retrospective last year at the Met, and all these people were like, oh wait, he really, even though he has significant ups and downs, mm -hmm. there's, he had enough really great periods. But now, because of what happened two weeks ago, uh, all we can, there's no way we're going to be able to hear the word hockey without hearing 91 million dollars. Yeah, right. It's like this thing when any, I mean, when, when you are the most expensive living artist with a work selling for 91 million dollars is a shitload of money. Yeah. Uh, and it's a great painting, but that's, you know, I'm like, a lot, yeah. yeah, so it's, it, and um, there was actually so wonderful. you sell your two paintings that you have? I only got prints, and, and, and I give a thousand dollars each of those. Uh, the, That's why you retired, right? <laughs> if, if I only bought that hockey painting when I was an undergrad, right? Uh, yeah, no, it's just I can. Uh, there was a lot of really interesting editorial analysis the day after the sale, mm -hmm. saying, "Well, this is an artist who the art forum critical establishment has never paid attention to." He is a painter that's beloved without being critically lauded. Mm -hmm. And he's always been one of those like a, a lovable but sort of not serious characters. And then suddenly to have him get that sort of like the most expensive painter. Yeah. yeah. But you talked about Peter Doig before, and Peter Doig, I, I 
still had the thing of like when he jumped from being a fifty thousand dollar painting to a painting selling for eleven million mm -hmm. when he was like thirty four. Right. Uh, and I would, and it's something maybe you're like, do I like Peter Going enough? Like, what, what, if, <laughs> yeah. if 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 like someone like Mark said like, no, I've got ten million dollars, buy me a Peter Doy, would I be like, oh, we got some other things we'd like you to get first? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, you, you're a Peter Doig fan though. Oh yeah, I love him. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, that's a difficult difficult thing. It's like they don't, the artist doesn't really have much to do with that, right? Yeah. Um, oh, but, but it, like, it does mess with people's heads. And I've yeah. been friends with artists when their prices have jumped. And you know, I, I I got seen next to Jonas Wood at a party recently. Yeah. And Jonas is like the nicest goofball guy, but he's suddenly like those things that like you know he I mean he can't wipe his nose without it selling for two million dollars. Right. So, right. Yeah. But what can you do except just keep making making stuff? Yeah. You know? But it's, yeah, I mean, imagine it's um, really difficult to just kind of keep the blinders up and keep your ears ears plugged and just like focus on work and not like think about the swirl of money. Yeah. Around, around everything. Yeah. Oh, but I've talked to people when like when those price jumps happen and they're like, uh, like I left the studio and I a painting was two thirds finished, and suddenly my prices went from forty thousand dollars a painting to four hundred fifty thousand, and then I show up in the morning and I've got to put wet paint on something that's worth four hundred fifty thousand right, dollars, right, right. even though it's mine and it was wet the day before. Oh, what gosh. does that do with you? You know, it's like. It takes a little while and a lot of therapist bills. Yeah, <laughs> but you can afford it now. <laughs> so the um, <laughs> so I um, have you gotten to see your paintings when they move into like fancy homes? Like, have you, have you gotten to go visit them there? Or? A few, yeah. I've been I've been to a few like a few installs. Um, yeah. Have have anyone have they moved in getting like corporate like lobby spaces type stuff or? Um, recently, there was uh, MD Anderson's new um, Clear Lake facility. Yeah. Um, there was a floral painting that that went there, and I haven't seen it in person. But there's supposed to be some reception or something. Yeah. But um, not I haven't seen it yet. But yeah. yeah. It, uh, actually, hospitals are really interesting when work goes there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Ann Cravens, and I was. At um, a cancer ward uh, uh, for last stage cancer patients visiting a relative, and I was walking down the hall in that kind of emotional state. That and suddenly there was Anne, one of Anne's like bird paintings mm -hmm. there in the hallway, and I'm like, Anne's a close friend, and I'm like, I'm just looking at this bird painting and thinking like, this is a place where people are dying, and right. and and it's like, and I was like. Oh what? Well, no, why is this here? So I texted Anne. I'm like, Anne, I'm in a cancer ward uh, for uh, cancer hospice, and one of your bird paintings is here. And of course, the question, first question she asked me was, is it in a good condition? Right. Uh, because right. things aren't really protected there. And I'm like, there were, there were a couple scuffs on it, but I'm like, yeah, it looks like it's had a few encounters, but it's okay. Right. And then she's like, I'm like, she's like, well, it's really nice to know that people at last stage cancer, you know, are like there with one of my paintings. So. Yeah, exactly. It's like. You know, I think it's a, ultimately a good thing um, when you, when you think of uh, when you think of that that part about it. It's not just about you know the artist like selling something to this um, corporate entity or hospital. It's like the the actual purpose of it, the, the thing that people are getting from it. Um, it's a series of, of floral paintings and um, just a bunch of like birds or something. It's it's it can be this beautiful thing that hopefully you could give someone relief. That's great. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Now, are you good with plants? In your, are you, like, are you good at tending? <laughs> I, I am. Um, it's funny you bring it up because my they, they're all dead now because I, I when I left for a month. My... <laughs> <laughs> it used to be good with plants. So no, 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 no. It's the wife that's in trouble now. Right. Uh, but I can't. But I can't because I left for a month. I can't blame her for anything. <laughs> the kids live. The kids live, the plants live. <laughs> 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 okay, the good news is the kids live. Okay, so we'll start with that. She's amazing, but she's not perfect, you know. Yeah. Another summer. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I was uh, in London last week, and I, and I went to see this artist talk for this feminist art show at a gallery, uh, at, at, at the Holdsworth Gallery. Mm -hmm. And I was actually looking at this one painter that Nancy Luton was gonna, is interested in. And, but then there was another artist who had started getting plants for an installation and then became obsessed 
with plant care. And yeah. she realized she could spend everything she made in a year getting all these particular grow lights and these things and these like that to buy for it. Right. And I and I remember just when I've been to your when you're when I visited your studio when it was in your house, right. I remember seeing a lot of growing things. And I'm looking out this window at at, at Deborah's uh, um, handiwork of, of plants. Right, right. No, it's definitely something that has you know, I've enjoyed doing in the past, but since having having two kids, it's yeah. definitely kind of taken taken a um, you know back seat uh, for obvious reasons. But um, yeah, I think in the springtime we'll start building up another collection since the other ones are, are gone. But um, but yeah, it's just something another thing to kind of yeah. you know nurture and bring up and arrange. But it's it's also like source material as well. Like you know, yeah. some paintings are. Composites of like just different photos of different plants I've taken photos of. This one's. This one's well, I mean, do you, like as a painter, know the names of these plants? Like, oh no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't go, I don't go that far into it. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know. I didn't want to know if you named them like Frankie and Liz. <laughs> right. Uh, but I don't know if you were like, like just the type, the type of plant it is. No, I don't. I mean, I don't really care about that part. <laughs> like, yeah. the, but the flowers too. I have to always look up what the flowers are. Yeah. See, I'm the type of nerd. If I started getting this, I would actually take a botany class and learn yeah. all that stuff. Because I, I love, I love the idea of nomenclatures and what and how we how we name and how we classify these things. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm like one tr can like get like focused on one thing and get really one track mind. I would just like devote. I would stop painting and like, just like go and yeah. I allow myself to, to go there. Yeah. I have known a lot of visual artists who start. Someone gives them an orchid as like a birthday present. Mm -hmm. And six months later on, they have this like kitchen full of grow lights and orchids, and they're like clipping these things. Because I think that orchid, the cult of the orchid thing, is really huge in Texas. Yes. Um, yeah, they're everywhere. Um, I've never been able to to do those. Yeah. No, no. People have given them to me, and they lasted three weeks, and then not so much. You know, well, water uh, huh? you know, once a week. Well, water once a week. I, I knew the basic yes. directions. Water once a week, but then they still like you got to move them in and out of the light and the stuff. I mean, the only thing I have that continues to grow is I I I, um, I got a small sage thing outside. I put it outside, and that is now the size of a bushel. If you need any sage, I am really <laughs> long on sage. Uh, but that's the only thing that seems to grow really well. Yeah, the things that take little to no. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I, 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 that's what I kind of love. Moved here from Boston, right. and Boston had a seven-month dormant period. So, like, your garden would pretty much be gone by the October, and then you had to, to see what would grow back. Right. And then I moved here, and I'm like, there's no dormant period. Like, right. You know. It's pretty much yeah, like year-round. So it's nice. Yeah. Although I was walking the dog this morning, and there was like so many leaves down from the storms of last week. Right. I was like, and I was kind of sliding on the leaves, and I'm like, this is not fun. You know, it's like right. fall lasts all year, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it looks like fall, but it feels like summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in terms of influencing, you, you, you went to U of H, mm -hmm. and did you go to uh, undergrad there, too? or North Texas. North Texas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, uh, were there particular um, realist painters that were actually your, like Rachel, or? Um, at U of H or yeah, you, uh, either one, either yeah. one, yeah. Robert it, it, Jessup, yeah. Robert Jessup was there. Um, I worked closely with uh, Ed Blackburn um, and, um, of course, Matthew Bourbon. Yeah. Um, and, um, but yeah, at, at U of H, it was um, really Gail and Rachel for sure. Yeah. Um, kind of took me under their wing, um, and Rachel, I just. Love. Gail makes herself hard to love, but Rachel is Rachel is like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the second time today Gail being hard to love has come up in a conversation. That's interesting. <laughs> she tries to. Yeah. She can't fool me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, so um, going off to the motherland of painting history of yeah. Italy, mm -hmm. did you suddenly I I I I've seen doing Italian residencies change people's palettes radically, suddenly it's all these golds and blues. Right. And um, uh, just from the watercolors, I didn't see that, but no, like, are you suddenly having seen these colors in the, uh, 
or uh, uh, is, is, is it looking more Veronese like or? I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because again, I haven't really like, I haven't really planned or thought about things that what I'm going to be doing uh, with that stuff yet, but I think it, it's going to have to, it will have to like change slightly. Um, the colors here are so like, you know, you know, dense and tropical and like, you know, very saturated and there was just so, you know, dusty and um, the light is just a very specific color and lots of sunset photos as well. And so mm -hmm. I'm playing with, playing with the, like, you know, that, that gradient is something I'm thinking about. Um, no, which, which residency were you on? So it's called Villa Lena. Villa Lena. Yeah, and it's really like in the middle of Tuscany, um, in the countryside. On a hill. You probably had a few good meals while you were there. Yes, one or two. <laughs> um, but the, the other thing was funny about painting there. It's like painting you know, your palette. It's like Tuscan red, burnt sienna. Like, <laughs> the names. Terracotta. Yeah. The names. Are, yeah, so the, the, names like the colors are where you are. Describing your environment, which is so, so, it's a real metaphysical thing. You're like, uh, like, don't think about this too much. But yeah. just being, it was amazing being at like the source of of those things, like the tradition of painting, um, yeah. and definitely like ha have a like, uh, urge to kind of tap into that a bit when, I'm, when I revisit those, those yeah. images, that source material. Yeah. Well, I think about the whole history of modern painting, there's still the tradition of you go off to Italy for your education, mm. was, and, until the early part of the 20th century it was still the thing. the thing, like if you were English or you were in Boston, you would go off to Italy to learn to paint. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't even see that much painting. Um, really? I was there, yeah. We, once it was, yeah, once once I was out, out of the countryside and like in the cities, it was with family, so we were, you know, preoccupied with kids and more just like walking around and looking at architecture. Yeah. But I think every time, I, I had this guidebook when I was there of every little Tuscan town had like four masterpieces in the little church that was next to the gelato stand. Yeah, 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 just like right there, yeah. just casually. Yeah. That's the thing about it, everything just like, every corner you turn is like this beautiful thing, whether it's a painting or a yeah. vista or a, a, a cone with ice cream on top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Mark, where was the uh, Snoopy gelato store? Uh, Cortana. Cortona, and then there was this incredible cathedral right next to. Right. Yeah, so, so, so like there was a big picture of Snoopy outside the cemetery, <laughs> and and they had this this burnt orange chocolate gelato that I still dream about. Yeah. And then we walked in, and there was like this incredible cathedral right next to it. Right, the juxtaposition of those. Things. Yeah, and then like kids playing soccer, and like you know that's where they grew up, so this is probably normal. Right, yeah, or like even like um, this um, like thinking like a basilica in Trastevere in Rome. This like this kind of really shabby court the piazza, and then like inside is the most gilt ornate like mosaic like cathedral. Um, just like yeah, just the idea of like walking past that like that's your normal day to day thing. Yeah. It's like it's just surreal coming from Texas where that just doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, I was just big on last week. I was aware of like what they consider a new building is like the oldest building in Texas. Yeah, you know, exactly, like, exactly. And, and like everything there, like, you know, <laughs> everything there is 200 years old and like that's like the beginning and then mostly it's like 600 years old. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Like the, the villa that I stayed at when I was at the residency was like, you know, built before the United States was a, was a country. Yeah. Why is that a thing? How is that? <laughs> just, yeah. just mind blowing. Yeah. So actually, that, that does mean like, I don't, if I walked into a gallery in LA or London and I saw these paintings, I would not be thinking, oh, this is a Texas painter. Mm. Uh, is there anything particularly, uh, like, like, do you see something in your work that actually is particularly Texan? Um, I mean, it's hard to disassociate from like, the actual places. Yeah. Um, there's certainly lots of, I think that really the most distinctive thing that comes to my mind is like, if I'm doing a landscape, I would generally be like, reduced to like a very straight line, which yeah. is like the coastal plain of you know Southeast Texas that I yeah. grew, grew up in. And so just that, that idea of landscape was just like this really simple line is something yeah. that I think is, for me it's like distinctive, but it wouldn't necessarily make someone yeah. to think of Texas. Yeah. Um, I, I do think of everyone having really overgrown backyards, like you go to someone's house in the Heights, it's like right on Studewood, yeah. you go to the backyard and you're like, I'm in the Amazon. You know? Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> really lush overgrown. But it could, that could be anywhere, that could be Alley, it could be you know, yeah. Mexico. Um, 
So yeah, there's not there's not a ton of like distinctive features, yeah. um, especially with like architecture too. Because it's just like you know, things are replaced very quickly. But um, yeah, I thought of, I thought about it for sure, but I haven't really wanted to make that specific. Well, you do have the bar room scene one. That 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 seems That's, that seems conspicuously text in the main. That yes, I have a, I have dreams of a, a whole series of like honky tonk paintings. Um, that's just yeah. Although I don't, I don't think he was a big honky tonker, really, but I'm into a few. <laughs> <laughs> Should we open it for questions now? Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions for the two of them? I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so you know a lot of these are very figurative or realistic, but this one looks like kind of a departure. So because it's, I don't know if you just zoomed in or the, you know the shadow. Um, I mean that's kind of the that's kind of the thing with that one is that it's just um, I, I think about them all this, the same way um, they're they're from a representational image something very specific and then um, there there are parts of all the paintings that you know if you get close enough just break down into like paint paint things and become more more abstract um, but yeah any sort of breathing room or any sort of like space in it. Um, there are other paintings of mine that, that have done that, just like super flat, almost like, a, I think of it like a rug or a carpet or something. Um, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Are you a fan, a fan of the pattern decoration painters, like Zanatich and those guys? Not, as, not so much, I mean, yeah, I think, but yeah, I like the idea of having paintings that speak to each other, like, like that one could be a zoom in of the one in the back. Some of them are like, directly like zoom in. Yeah, so um, it's just like a self-referential kind of kind of thing as well. But you're not working on a computer though, which would because when you say zoom in, I mean, no, 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 it would be like you know, I mean, I use a computer for editing things, but yeah, because there are things that look almost like proto cyber, but then it's all so hand done. Exactly, yeah, um, and part of that comes from if it goes from a photo to a, a watercolor study to a painting, it's like you know just losing. Losing information along the way, um, or sort of purposefully stripping things down, and you know, getting getting more like formal, like color and paint and stuff. Anybody else have any questions? I see a lot of painters in the room, so I keep thinking you should be asking like super technical painting <laughs> questions, like what kind of what, what, what's that color again? Yeah. Because we were big in the are what they are with the shapes, and, mm -hmm. and they're big and bold and powerful. I mean, so it's, more like it's, a, it's like a to me. I mean, not to compare, but it's like a David Hockney, David Bates marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like a really, I like that. and I like both of these things immensely. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, that is a, the most quotable line of the day: David Bates, <laughs> David Hockney marriage. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, yeah. Oh, um, so looking at some of these paintings, I, I recognize, you know, the different plants within them. And some are very true to the color of that, that plant, and right. some are maybe not, right? right? So I guess my question is, at what point does that diverge? You know, at what point is it a realism question? At what point does it become a formal question, a formalist kind of yeah, it's decision. Like, yeah, and talking about that a little bit before, it's like reminding myself to let it, let it be a painting. Um, and it's like usually when I'm half, <laughs> halfway through and I'm just like, I'm kind of, uh, you know, cursing myself for having picked this, this intricate, crazy thing to paint. <laughs> why, why did I do this? Like thinking I have to like be, be really articulate and get it perfect. Um, and then, you know, Remind, and I asked ask myself that question, and I reminded, like, oh, it's not about that, it's about you know, being more formal with it. And so that's what I kind of like, if I get stuck, I can usually get out. Get There's out like a process that kind of happens yeah. organically throughout the painting. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Thanks. Anyone else? Yes. Thank you. This was great Thank you so fun. Much, well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thank you.